Welcome back to the How To FPV series, part two, where today we'll be downloading Betaflight and a drone simulator. If you're new here, this is part two of a six part series where I'm showing you the steps I took in my three years experience of how to build and fly FPV drones. I'll show you how to get there from start to finish within just a few months. And from the trial and error that I went through, I wanted to make this series to save you the costly and timely mistakes I made along the way. So let's start part two right where we left off part one. You made your first of many purchases in the FPV world. You bought your first starter drone. The all-in-one kit from Emacs that I talked about in part one, or something that was cheap and similar, that had everything you needed to get started. So you bought it, but now you have to learn how to fly it without breaking it first. And that's why this next step is so crucial in helping you achieve this. And the way we're going to start off is flying in a drone simulator. This way we have a little bit of muscle memory and orientation before we get in the air actually flying. And whatever mode we fly in or trick we want to learn moving forward, this is the best place to come to learn how to do it, which will add weeks to the life of your drone. But before we download the simulator, we're going to download a program that is sequential to your skills and knowledge base as an FPV pilot. This software will be used all the way up to building drones yourself. And that program is called Betaflight. Beta Flight is simply software that is designed to program your drone's flight controller. Think of the flight controller as the brain of your drone. The flight controller speaks to the battery, motors, RC, goggles, and so on, and shares information between every piece of that hardware. So further down the series, when we get closer to building your first drone, we'll dive even deeper into this program. But that's not what we're going to use Betaflight for today. Today, we're just going to take a quick look around and get familiar with the program. And we're going to test out the receiver tab to see which switches are set up right out of the box with your starter kit. So in the description below will be a link so you can download the latest and greatest version of Betaflight. In this link will be different versions for the Mac or the PC to be able to download for whatever operating system you're using. So once you get this downloaded, let's get over to the computer and take a look at Betaflight and all the menu tabs that it has. But first we need to hook the drone up to the computer. And to do this, I want you to look on the side of your drone, there will be a mini USB port. This is how you get your flight controller to interface with Betaflight. And to do this, you'll need a mini USB to USB cable to hook to the side of your drone. You'll need to make sure that this USB cable is data transfer capable and not just for charging. If it's just for charging, you won't be able to connect it to Betaflight. You'll see once you plug into the drone and the computer, there will be flashing lights on the flight controller signaling that it's hooked up. Then once you open Betaflight, this configuration screen will pop up. Once you're on the screen, in the top right corner there is a connect button and a port tab showing your drone is connected. Now let's hit the connect button. And if for some reason this tab doesn't respond when hitting connect, let me know in the messages and I'll get you to a video that can help you solve this problem by downloading a driver. This usually happens when it's a PC and not a Mac. I had this problem when I had one. But like I said, you can troubleshoot this first by making sure that you have a data transfer USB cable and not just a charging one. That way you know that part of the problem is diagnosed if it is a driver. Now, hopefully you are connected into Betaflight. If you are, pick up your drone. You'll be able to move it around in your hand and you'll see the drone moving around in the monitor, which indicates that the flight controller is hooked up to Betaflight. You'll see different tabs here on the left-hand side of the screen, each one playing a different role in programming exactly how you want to set up your drone in Betaflight. So we're gonna take a look at a few of these tabs just to get you familiar with a few of them at a time until you level up to build your very first drone. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do when building your very first drone that day is learning how to download this software and know nothing about it at the same time. This way you'll already have it downloaded and have a pretty decent understanding of this program if you follow along with me in this series. And that confidence will make building your first drone that much easier. So your drone is oriented right, that's a great start. Now let's sit it down on a flat surface. And now we can hit the calibrate accelerometer button just to calibrate what the drone knows as a level surface to the ground. Out of the 13 tabs on screen, we're only going to mess around with two others today. And for your RC to be able to work while being plugged into Betaflight, look up beside Disconnect and Update Firmware and click on the Enable Expert Mode. So in the Receivers tab, there is a list of commands that each stick has assigned to each axis. You'll see roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. If you turn on your RC and start moving around the sticks, you'll see these moves on the screen. Your right stick, when you move it left to right, should move the roll meter. And moving the right stick up and down for the pitch, and the left stick left to right for the yaw, and the left stick up and down for the throttle. If these aren't assigned right, just shoot me a message in the comments and we'll get this set up right for you. Now, let's go to the modes tab. You'll see a list of different commands on this screen. Start to see which switches move which commands and make sure you know which one arms the drone and how to switch between horizon and angle mode. For these are the modes we'll fly the drone on first for practice because they're easier to fly in and which we'll cover next on the drone sim. 
There is over a dozen drone simulators out there, and they all have their own unique features. Some have better graphics like a video game, some are better for racing, and others have more realistic flight characteristics like gravity and real world scenarios. And this is a perfect part of your journey where you might wanna start asking yourself what type of FPV pilot you wanna be moving forward. There's freestyle, there's racing, and the one that I gravitated towards was more of shooting cinematic footage with a drone. I enjoy and believe that freestyle tricks are essential to every form of FPV, and racing really locks in repetitive movements and lock in smooth lines and your overall control of the drone. But I started finding my place in the last year in wanting to get cinematic shots with the drone. And this has put me down a path about learning more about camera gear and lighting as well. And I'm looking forward to blending the two together. That's where I'm steering my overall attention in FPV. But whatever journey is for you, you can research and download whatever simulator will work best for you and fit your style of FPV you want to learn moving forward. So the drone simulator I use is Liftoff, and I'll have a link in the description on how you can download that for PC or Mac. It doesn't have the best graphics, but it serves its purpose, and it has some pretty cool levels you can fly. Especially if you start following FPV and you start learning from the greatest, who is Joshua Bardwell. They have his yard setup out there that you always see him fly in his videos, which is pretty awesome. And I'll show you what that setup with Liftoff looks like. So let's look at Liftoff's menu and do a little bit of flying. Let's make sure your RC controller is plugged into the computer with the USB cable into the receiver. Then in liftoff, let's head under the options menu and click under control. Once it's in the controller menu, it should detect the RC once it's in here. Then we're going to calibrate the stick. Here you'll see where they talk about roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle like what we went over in beta flight. That's why it's essential to know these controls and what they're called and where they're assigned. After calibration, we can hop over to freestyle and give it a go. I'd encourage you to fly in horizon mode when first starting off, which all you have to do is hit the A button on the keyboard till you see at the top left corner, horizon mode come up. It will toggle between acro and possibly level mode as well. We're going to learn in horizon mode and then eventually switch to acro mode. The reason we'll start in horizon mode is because the drone will self level and you can just get a basic feel for the throttle control before learning anything else. In horizon mode, you can still flip and roll, but once you throttle up and press forward on the pitch to fly, it will self level back out, which makes flying a little easier at first. The simulator is really hard and feels unnatural at first, but give us some time and crash all you want. You're not breaking anything. After a few hours of practicing in this, you'll start to feel more natural keeping it in the air. And whenever you get comfortable in the simulator and you're ready for the first flight, get the batteries charged up and head over to part three where I'll be flying outside and showing you the best way to get started to doing that without crashing your drone too, too much. Until then, keep practicing on the simulator and I'll see you out there.